Hey everyone, how you doing? Wazoo here. And this is now episode two of our Spring Boot To Do API server mini tutorial, mini series. I don't know. I really hesitate using those words because I always seem to jinx myself and I start these things and then I like almost never come back to them. So <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll pretend it's not, it's not one of those things. But in this case, um, where we last left off is we are creating a to-do API server in Java Spring Boot and we've got our basic to-dos coming back with a get all request or when we do a get request we get all of them back and so in this this episode we're going to be covering uh, creating a new to-do item updating one modifying one well I guess the same as updating of course and deleting so create update and delete and getting a single entity getting a single one so for a demo I've got a small screen share going here okay good so far that works okay so we've got uh, if I do a, a send a get request of all the items then we have our starting two two items in the database like we normally do and now if we use a post event to the same endpoint and we create a payload of a description and we'll just call it new to do and then we'll uh, give it a complete of false if we send that then we also get it created which is really cool uh, it's got a new ID it saves our description it saves our complete status uh, as well as our created date and the modified date which we'll be also adding in this in this episode okay so we now have an ID of three so let's go ahead and let's use a put request and change that to um, we'll change the URL to add the three which is the ID of the one we want to modify and let's create a let's just complete it to true oh and we'll update new to do to do we'll just update the description and we'll change the complete flag to true and we'll send that and there we go we get a response of new to do to do with the complete flag set to true and our modified date has been updated to a few seconds ago and last but not least, or no, uh, we can now get send a single send a get request to get a single entity. So let's do that, and we now have our single to do item. And now let's send a delete request. So we want to delete and same URL uh, to do it slash API slash v1 slash to do items slash three, and we send that. And we get a 200 OK, but no response comes back from that. But then if we do a get all request again, you'll see that we only have the two items in our database. So that third one has been purged. Cool, super cool. I can't wait to get started on this. This will be great. We have our controller uh, right here. Let's see. Our controller, which just returns uh, the get request, so the get all. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're now going to handle creating a new one, and that's usually handled in the uh, in in typical REST fashion. It's handled with a POST request uh, to to the same endpoint. So we're going to do a public. We'll return a to do item, and we'll create to do item. That's what we'll call the method, and we'll be accepting the request body. Okay, uh, so we'll be sending some of the attributes along with the post request. So first thing, what we're gonna do is we're gonna be just creating a new, we're gonna instantiate a new to-do item. Oops, new to-do item, there we go. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy over the description from what we're passing in via the, via the request body description and we also want to set the um, complete flag to to do item is complete okay uh, new item set created date to right now and also set modified date 
to right now. And then we want to persist that that new item. So new item equals to do item repository save new item. And this the the save method of a uh, repository interface will return the newly created a copy of the well not a copy but it, it'll return the newly created um, item record. Sorry. So that's all we want to return back to the caller. Okay, so let's and let's absolve all these imports. Our set modify date function does not exist yet, so let's go ahead and let's create that now. So let's go back into the to do item uh, model. And in the properties here, underneath the created date, let's create a modified date. So using the getter and setter annotations, private instant modified date. Okay. And then let's add it to our two string override. Modify date equals uh, quote percent s. And I'll, I'll end that. I'm wondering if that was a bug for modify date. All that looks correct. And now let's uh, go back to our controller and everything looks good. So let's go ahead and uh, we can test it out using Postman again. So uh, let's see where we left off. We've got our get. Let's send that and see what we have. So we've got, oh, yeah, we've got the one item here because we deleted the other ones. Let's go ahead and, or no, sorry, we've got the one item because that's all we have in our uh, seed, seed file. So now let's go ahead and let's test out the post. So we want to post to that same endpoint slash API slash v1 slash to do items. We want to do a description here. So let's do um, brand new to do item. And then completed a false. We can also leave completed out. Let's do that just to show you what we, we get as a response. So we'll send that to the service. And here we go. We got a new ID of two, description of brand new to do item, completed false by default. The created date and the modified date should match uh, because they're roughly created exactly at the same time which they are here and okay so that's looking pretty good all right let's go back into our controller here and let's create a a get mapping for just an individual to do item so we use the get mapping annotation and we this time we include a slash ID because we're looking for an ID in the actual uh, URL. So let's do a, um, an optional. We want to return an optional of an item and all an optional. Uh, I'll finish typing all this in before I explain it. We want to use the path variable annotation because we're looking for an ID in the path. And let's do long ID. Okay, and then all we're going to do is we're going to return to do item repository, we're going to attempt to just find the record by the given ID. And that is it. So what the optional allows us to do, if you haven't uh, really come across them before in Java, it it's basically a wrapper container, um, a container, not a wrapper container, but a container around a variable that you're you're you don't quite know if it's going if the result of that variable is going to be null or if it's going to be valid with something in it so since we're requesting this record from the database the repository interface will may or may not find that record given the id so if we give it a crazy id then it, it's going to return null likely right um, so that's sort of what this optional container allows you to do is it it's sort of um, gives you a safer way of fetching fetching records from the database and then path variable the path variable uh, uh, annotation is just used by Spring Boot to look for um, the actual variable that you're trying to pass via the URL so in this case it's the ID of the to-do item that we're looking for okay so let's uh, let's restart this service and let's go back to Postman 
and we've got an ID a record here with an ID of two. So why don't we look for that with uh, to do items slash two, and we get brand new brand new item to do item still not completed. The creation the created and modified dates are still the same, but everything's everything's looking great. And uh, now let's give it a let's let's try and look for record number two hundred. Let's see what we get. We get null. So ideally, we want we would want to maybe um, we still and notice that our response is still a 200 OK. So ideally, what we might want to do is um, if it's not if it's not present, then re instead of just returning null, return a proper 404. So let's finish doing the uh, the other mappings. OK, so let's go back in our controller. And this time we're going to be handling the put put request which is what uh, you're traditionally using when you're trying to update a record via your REST API. So the PUT mapping will go to that same ID endpoint. And this time we are going to be calling this one update to do item. And again, we'll be looking for a, a path variable of the ID. And we're also going to be looking for any information that's in the request body and mapping that. Spring will try and map that to the to do item type. So we want to create an optional to do item. Close to do item repository bind by ID, ID. So first we attempt to look for the record and we also want to create a an empty to-do item that we'll copy those things into. So if there's a method on the optional container called is present, which means it's basically checking is if the the thing within the optional is exists or not. So if item is present, okay, then updated item equals we want to then just get the contents of the optional um, item container, which is the actual record, handled to the record. So now updated item, we want to set the description. Yeah, we want to set the description to the to-do item. So the description that's passed in the request, and we want to set the complete flag to the to-do item. Is complete and we want to also update the modified date to right now okay and then lastly as what we did with the create method what we're gonna do is try and save this to do item repository save updated item and then last but not least we want to return that back to the client so I'm kind of doing it this way. That way, if if we can't find the record, if we can't find the record with the given ID, then we'll just return basically an empty to-do item. But if it is present, if the record is found, then update our temporary variable, our temporary to-do item variable with uh, the information that we've passed in to the uh, via the request body, and then update the record in the database and return that. So let's go ahead and restart our server and let's test it out. Okay, so first let's get all the to-do items. Let's just make sure what we have. Okay, so we, we still have our two records in here. So let's update the second one. So we'll do a slash two. We'll change this request method to put and let's just change the description to foo. And we now got our ID remains the same. We've we've updated the description to foo. We're still not complete. The created date is a few minutes ago, and now the modified date is a few seconds ago, which is pretty cool. And then that, let's try updating the record with ID 2000, which it won't find. It won't exist. But let's take a look and see what happens. And as you can see, we get back a empty an empty to-do item if it's not found. So last but not least, 
let's take a look at the delete method. So let's use the delete mapping annotation. And again, we want to go to slash ID. Uh, whoops, delete. Okay. And we'll call this function delete to do item. And again, we're looking for the path variable ID, which is of type long. And again, we want to, uh, now there's two ways of doing this. Uh, the first way is that we can just do to do item repository delete by ID, ID. And that doesn't return anything and it just attempts to straight uh, delete whatever you pass into the function. I want to give it a little bit of smarts and I want to do our, our typical um, optional to do item item equals to do item repository find by ID ID. I want to first look for it and make sure it exists. And if it does exist, if item is present, then go ahead and delete it. To do item, whoops, oh, item repository uh, delete. And we want to return the get. We use we use the get um, for the optional optional variable. Okay, so that looks like the delete is taken care of. Let's go ahead and save that and restart the server. Okay, everything looks restarted. Let's go ahead and let's get all of our to-do items first. And we've got two to-do items. Let's go ahead and delete the second one. So let's set up a delete request to the to URL. And we get a 200 OK response, which means that uh, our request was at least accepted by the server and it didn't detect any errors. And so let's do a get request back to slash to do items. And we can see we, we now have our one. So let's try and delete a non-existent record. Um, so slash 2000. And we still get a 200 OK because the server does, is able to handle that request, but nothing should be updated in the database because, of course, we don't have any records with that ID of 2000. So let's just make sure that we'll use a get request and just get all, all of them. And we still only have our one, our one record in the database. Okay, and that about wraps it up for our second part of this small tutorial, mini tutorial series on building your own Java API server with Java Spring Boot. Your own API server. Yep, your own API server with Java Spring Boot. Join me for the next episode. We'll be going through either running through uh, integration tests or we'll look, take a look at Docker and how to containerize our uh, little tiny uh, Spring, Spring Boot to do API application. And that's it for me today. If you liked what you saw, please give the video a like, subscribe to the channel for regular notification of upcoming videos, and have yourself a really great day. Thanks. Peace.